Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu ve nusalli ala rasulihi l-kerim. Allahumma barik lana fi rajabin ve fi rajabin ve şaban ve balikna ramadan. We greet you uh, from my home in the Caribbean island of Trinidad. I'm still here with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. From far away over the Atlantic Ocean, from a little island just off the coast of Venezuela, I offer, <laughs> I offer this video entitled Calling Judaism. I offer this video so that the scholars of Judaism can be invited to respond because they offer comparisons with Islam. So let us offer a comparison with Judaism. We are the only two people on the, way, on the face of the earth today who do not eat pork as a matter of religious prohibition. We are the only two people on the face of the earth today that I am aware of who circumcise the male because the Lord God has ordered it. There are many I believe who now circumcise for medical reason but I may have the evidence tomorrow of truth which has remained in tribal religions. Truth which has remained so far away from us of a people who still circumcise not for medical reasons but circumcise because of tribal tradition because of religious traditions. But at this time, the two major people who circumcise are the followers of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, and the Banu, that part of Banu Israel who are today known as Jews. We are a people who both worship the one God. Yes, we both worship the one God. And so there is much in common between us. But uh, let me begin uh, uh, my address on calling Judaism by focusing on a divine promise which was made, which is made to the Israelite people. I believe, and I can be wrong, I believe that this prophecy, this divine prophecy, that the Lord God was going to send someone who is known, who would be known as the Messiah. The Messiah, someone who is anointed. And the Messiah will be sent to you, to the Israelite people. He will not be sent to, to all of mankind. No, no. And the Messiah will bring back that golden age. The, the Israelite people must have been heartbroken when the only holy state on the earth, Holy Israel, which was established by David, Nabi Dawood Islam, and then brought to the position of ruling state in the world by his son Solomon, the prophet king, Nabi Suleiman Islam and which ruled the world as a ruling state from Jerusalem. The Israelite people must have been heartbroken when after the death of Suleiman salam, Israel collapsed and disappeared. And the Israelite people were taken into bondage, into slavery in Babylon. And they were weeping by the rivers of Babylon. And the Lord God, I am, I am just suggesting this, I, I, I may be wrong, that it was at that time that he sent prophets to them who informed them about this prophecy, divine prophecy, that he would send them a Messiah who would bring back that golden age. And this must have brought joy and happiness to their hearts tears to their eyes because they were weeping, they were sad. And so the Messiah is someone of paramount importance to the Israelite people. 
And the Quran speaks about the Messiah. In fact, the last book I have written, and uh, if you allow me, uh, uh, the scholars of Jews, uh, Judaism, if you would allow me to suggest, <laughs> it might be beneficial for you to read my book, The Messiah, the Quran, and Akhir Zaman, meaning the end time. The Messiah, the Quran, and the end time. Someone in Morocco, uh, a, a member of the family of Maulana Fadl Rahman and Sari, my teacher, Rahimahullah, is now doing audio books, audio versions of my books, so that you can even listen to the book now. May Allah bless him uh, in Morocco who is doing this, and they will soon be on my YouTube channel. But you can order the book from my website, The Messiah, The Quran, and Akhir uh, Zaman. Uh, I think this is, no, no, this is not the last book I wrote. I wrote The Quran and the Moon after that. So one of the last books I have written. And in this book, the Quran has spoken to us about the Messiah. And the Quran has confirmed that Jesus, the son of Mary, of Maryam, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, that he is the Messiah. But the Jew rejects him as the Messiah. Those Israelite people who accepted him as the Messiah are now known in the Quran as a Nasara or the Christians. But those who rejected him as the Messiah are now known as the Jews. If they are Jews who accept Nabi, Muhammad, Nabi Isa Islam, Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, if they accept him as the Messiah, that's good news, that's good news. But we are focusing on the very large, almost total body of Jews in the world today, both Oriental as well as those who came from the European West, who all reject Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, as the Messiah. Here is the first big parting of ways between us and you, the Messiah. It's not about history. Don't go to the historical antecedents to try to, re to, to paint a picture of Islam as some backward thing. That's not the way of scholarship. The way of scholarship is to go to the scripture. And when we go to the scripture, the first thing that is very plain and clear as daylight is that we recognize Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam, as the son of a virgin mother, miraculously born of a virgin mother, and that he was sent by the Lord God as the promised Messiah. And you have rejected him. But there is, a, there is more that to come after that. The, the, the question of the crucifixion is very important because the Quran tells us that there are those Israelite people who were celebrating his crucifixion. Mm. And they were boasting. In, uh, قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيْسَ بِنَّ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Sarcasm. We've killed him. We've killed the Messiah. We've killed the, the, the Messenger of Allah. That is Jesus, the son of Mary. But there were other Israelites who were there and they were weeping. They were weeping because they believed in him. And... Uh, when that event took place, the Lord God then declared that not a single one of them would escape. وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ None of you will escape, but you will have 
you will be obliged to believe in him as the Messiah before he dies, before he dies. Of course, this is clear evidence that he's going to come back. He's not only the Messiah who came and left, but he's also the Messiah who will return. And so here we part company from you and we are warning you that when he returns and the, the, the followers of Jesus and the followers of Nabi Muhammad we are the only two people to today who on the basis of religious belief we believe as a matter of faith that Jesus is coming back. Don't bother about the Ahmadiyya movement with his bogus theology. They're being left behind by history now. The, the, the Christian and the Muslim both believe that Jesus is returning and he's returning in person, in flesh and blood, not in spirit. He's coming back to the world. And when he comes back to the world before he dies, at that time when he returns, you're going to have to accept him as the Messiah. So who is on the wrong side of history? Eh? Time will tell. This is calling Judaism before it's too late. I don't know if it's already too late. Then The Jews declare they are the chosen people of the Lord God. They say that heaven is reserved, reserved for them. Correct me if I'm wrong. They say that they will not be judged individually on Judgment Day. They say that they will be judged collectively as a community. And the re response from the Quran to this, I'm not giving a long talk, I'm focusing on special issues. The Lord God says that's false. You are not the chosen people of the Lord God. Rather, you have been blessed by the Lord God more than any other people. Why are you not grateful for that? He raised your t status higher than any other people. Are you not grateful for that? But Allah asks you, if you believe that you are indeed the chosen people of the Lord God to the exception of all the rest of mankind, you are superior to all the rest of mankind. You have this arrogance of a status, but birthright, a birthright status of superiority over all the rest of mankind. That's your belief, not mine. Then Allah says, Fataman Naul Maut and Kuntum Swadikin. Then why don't you desire death if you are truthful? Because you're going to heaven. That's what you believe. Heaven is reserved for you. Allah says they will never desire death because they know what they have done. I was in a university in the United States, uh, in New Jersey in the 1990s. Uh, perhaps it was Drew University and there was this uh, um, interfaith uh, conference Christians and Jews and Muslims there was a galaxy of rabbis representing Judaism a galaxy of ministers representing Christianity <laughs> and I was a sole solitary voice for Islam in that gathering and I remember asking them, if you believe that heaven is reserved for you, you are the chosen people of the Lord, why don't you desire death? My gosh, that statement provoked such fury. No, 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 that's not possible. They got, it touched them. Why don't you desire death if you are the chosen? No, you are not the chosen people of the Lord God. Our Prophet has said, Allah's blessing be upon him, he has said that all of mankind will stand before the Lord God on Judgment Day 
men as well as women, black as well as white, as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb. And so we are disposing of this false belief that you are the chosen people of the Lord God. And now before I end, because this is not intended to be a long talk calling Judaism, how do you explain that you were expelled from Jerusalem and the holy state of Israel was destroyed by divine decree? And you were scattered all over the world for 2,000 years. Who brought you back to Jerusalem? Who brought you back to Jerusalem? How did you return to Jerusalem? Hmm? If you have eyes, you can see that modern Western civilization brought you back to Jerusalem. That modern Western civilization is an essentially godless civilization. It's a pagan, a decadent civilization. It's an oppression. And in the same way that the Jews made an alliance with the pagan Arabs who are worshipping idols against us who worship one God. So too you made the same mistake 1400 years later in forming an alliance with the modern West to, to get the modern West to liberate the Holy Land for you and bring you back to recover the Holy Land and reclaim it as their own and to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land. Is that the way? Is that the way of truth? Do you ride on the back of a godless civilization to recover Jerusalem and to, and to re re restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land? Is that the way of truth? No. Well then, let me tell you before I end that the modern Western civilization has at its heart those who control power in the modern West are Gog and Magog. And you know about Gog and Magog because it's there in your, in your scriptures. But our Quran allows us to identify this is Gog and Magog. So Gog and Magog have taken you for a ride. And it's the last ride on which you'll ever go. This is calling Judaism before it's too late. And in the same way that Gog and Magog were checkmated in the first instance, there were only two, Karne in the Quran in Surah al kaf speaks of two, two periods of time when Gog and Magog would be contained and checkmated and therefore rendered harmless. There will no longer be any anything but an insignificant actor on the stage of the world, incapable of helping Israel. In the same way that they were checkmated once, the Quran is telling us that they'll be checkmated a second time. So as you go to your books, O scholars of Judaism, to seek to understand what's happening in Ukraine, remember, this is Islamic eschatology, directing its attention to you that the second current is coming and Gog and Magog are going to be checkmated a second time and modern western civilization will no longer be there to protect Israel. Thank you.